This is Mitchellum Priory, where Edward I once spent a night, and which, when the priory was dissolved in 1537, fell into the hands of Thomas Cromwell. Not only is it mentioned in Hilary Mantel's great novel Wolf Hall, but the title of The Mirror and the Light, the third novel in the sequence, was apparently inspired by its moat. As well it might have been, because this is the longest continuous moat in Britain, though sadly depleted when I visited in the summer of 2020. But redolent of the medieval past though Mitchellum is, it has also played a part in Sussex's more recent past. During the Second World War, the Canadian Army moved in. We used only part of the Priory. The remainder was closed to us. It was cold and draughty that winter, and our army boots made quite a clatter on the floors. All rooms were bare, any furnishings having been removed for safekeeping. This is a map scratched on a wall of the gatehouse, showing the Channel Coast and drawn by Corporal Robert Johnson from Calgary. The Canadians were based here in the build-up to the Dieppe raid in August 1942, and the map conveys a vivid sense of the planning that would have been going on here. Prior to the arrival of the Canadians, evacuees from Rotherhithe had been billeted in Mitchellum. An album of photographs still in the house captures the sense of how strange it must have been for children from London to come to such an extraordinary place. The moat may seem superfluous today, but the evacuees found a use for it. How wonderful it is that in a county as rich in history as Sussex, even the Archaeological Society, an absolute model of how to preserve and cherish the legacy of the past, should be 175 years old this June. Now is the perfect opportunity to help it flourish for at least another 175 years. <laughs>